want to be empowered with the Holy Spirit? Are you in need of an uplifting message? It's time for today's Uplift, encouraging words and biblical truths to help you find freedom in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for Uplift. I'm Phil Bliss. And I'm Ian Thornton. Ian. Yes, Phil. Do you like spaghetti? You know what I do? I had it for the first time in a long time, a couple nights ago. And, uh, yes, I love spaghetti. Really? I, I so you've had it before? I have had it before, yes. The first time in a long time, but you've had it before? Yes, I've had you it You think before. you'll have it again? I will. Isn't it something how we will eat food over and over and not think much of it? Okay, you just know that it's been the first time in a long time, but you don't know when the last time you ate it, right? No, I don't. You know what you had for dinner a week ago? No. No, I don't either. But it nourished our bodies, didn't it? Yes, it did. And yes, I was just did. thinking today how we we think sometimes when we, like if we hear a sermon and we say, oh, well, I've heard that one before, and then maybe we, we, tune, we start to tune it out a little bit. Yeah. Start yeah. to think about what am I going to do after church? What am I going to do? <laughs> um, you know, who's playing football today? Things like that, right? Right, right. Why not hear it again? Yeah. Why not listen again? Because every time you eat spaghetti, or any food for that matter, I don't even know what I had for dinner last night. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> but it nourished my body. It did. And what I'm getting at is it yes. nourishes our bodies. That's good. The spiritual food nourishes our bodies. Mm-hmm. Now, I just, that's not what I necessarily want to talk about tonight, but I just, that thought has been on my mind all day. and. Mm. Good word. And, and I haven't had spaghetti for a while, and I'm hoping that Tanya will see this and we'll have spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I did have it once last week. So, but that's one of my favorite. Things Is it to really? Eat. Yeah, yeah. It's one. It's not good for me, but it, it's one of my favorite things to eat. But um, and another thing about brisket. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's me. Uh, yeah. Yep. Smoked brisket. Oh yes. Yeah. Yes. When's the last time you had that? A couple of weeks ago. But my birthday's coming up, so. Oh. <laughs> it <laughs> is. Be having it soon. By the time people are hearing this or watching this, you will be another year older. <laughs> That's right. I will be. You will be. I know. You're going to be older than me. I know. 35. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 36. <laughs> <laughs> and we oh just lied. Gracious. We both yes, just lied. Yes, we did. We both just lied. 52. You're going to be 52. 52. Now, I'm not going to be 52 yet. Not yet, but it's coming. Six months. Yes, Six months. exactly. Right. That's right. Okay, and you know, another thing that we can't hear enough of is how much God loves us. Yeah, that's, that's true. So true. And I know personally, and I know if I have experienced this, then everybody out there, our audience, they've experienced this too. And I, I know we all have. Mm-hmm. We question at times, does God really love me? Oh, I know. Yeah, and the answer is yes. Emphatically. Emphatically, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but we do question it. Right. You're right, we do. And when we can get to the point where we just know and we 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 still may question, but if we just live every day knowing how much God loves us, mm-hmm. it will make such a difference. Man, that is so true. I, I just I, I go to um, you know, even Raising children, mm-hmm. you know, and and we see at points in times where they're stepping into a new phase of life, where they're going to try something different, or they're going to try something new. Um, the questions and all that come into their minds about their abilities to be able to do those. We're so confident as parents, we're confident that they can step into this, that they can do this, that they can learn this, um, that they can perform how they need to perform, and and it's because we just we love them, right? And we just know it. And at points we go, man, if they would just grasp how much we care about them, oh, how yeah. much we love them, how yeah. much we are willing to support them, how much we're willing to do for them to help them hmm. do what they're going to be doing. If they could just see it, if they could just understand it, and God looks at us the same way. Absolutely. Doesn't he? He does. You know, there's a couple of reasons for having kids. One is to populate the earth, right? To keep yeah. the human race going. That's biblical. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but 
I believe also God has us have kids so that we will experience that. Yeah. So we will love our children and then someday say, oh, that's how much God loves me. Yeah. And yeah. even more. That's right. That's, that is so true. You it know, really is. We can't even put into words how much God really loves us. No. No, we can't. Now, the Apostle Paul tried. He did. In Romans chapter 8, <laughs> verse 31. <laughs> yeah, he did. He, he said, you, can you read that? Yeah, uh-huh. Romans 831. 831. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any change, who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Jesus Christ who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. But who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced. Now, I think this is an interesting shift. Here, yeah, yeah. Isn't it? This, that's why I had you start up there. I know. Isn't it great? Yeah. Because we go from the physical side. Right. Right. Right in, into the spiritual. Exactly. And I want to say something about that. So go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So we're at verse 38. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons... Neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yeah. That, it, I'm glad you picked up on that shift because that is that is so important. It's it is. both the physical and the spiritual. It is. It's all creation. Nothing in this world including our own sins, can separate That's us right. from the love of God. Exactly. It's so neat to see how, how Paul walks through um, his, his life and the physical yeah. um, dealings that he had, um, the things that he faced and the, sh- the hardships and the struggles right. that he faced. Right, right. Um, and, and those are the things we can look at. And, and at points we can go, well, I've never been stoned. I've never been shipwrecked. I've never been, you know, that's right. hard for me to relate to. Been in prison. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And it's hard to relate to at points, but we can relate to the physical things because we've all had difficult times. But then Paul goes deep into the spiritual. Yeah. Because we live in two worlds. And we do. We do. We live in two worlds, and there is an enemy who is stalking about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, and that whom is us. Right. And so we need to have an understanding, um, a, a realization, um, an acceptance, maybe, that there really is an enemy that is out there to destroy us. Right. And it doesn't matter how much money you make or how much money you have. Right. It doesn't matter if you're male or female. It doesn't matter your quote unquote status in society. Right. It does not. It doesn't matter. You're not too big for him to bring down. You're not too little for him to be concerned about. Right. He wants to devour everyone. Exactly. Everyone that has breath in their lungs. That's exactly right. And when those attacks happen, we cannot forget that we are loved so greatly right. and right. so deeply. And that in the middle of that attack, God's love for us is is enormous and it is greater than ever those things can't separate right nothing can separate us from the love of god which is in christ jesus our lord and one thing i wanted to point out is for the longest time yeah long long time i saw this word in my bible here it says for i'm persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come I saw that word principality, Mm -hmm. and immediately I thought of governments, like municipalities and governments. And I'm like, okay, so angels and governments and powers, like people in power, never in my mind connected that Mm. to demonic forces, because that's what the enemy wanted me to believe. Yeah, they want to stay hidden from you. Right. 
<laughs> they, they're like, we know what this guy's going to do. That's right. <laughs> you know? But when I learned that, and then I said, and it was actually in this verse here where I, someone was explaining it, and I went, those are demons. Powers are demons. Then I went, wait a minute, I heard this before, Ephesians chapter 6. Yes. And I turned to the armor of God, and it's talking about principalities and powers and rulers of this dark world. And mm. like, oh, man, yep. just opened the door for me, wide open to understand. But still, none of that can separate me no. from the love of God, no. the love of God from any of us. Right. And that's something that, again, like I said when we first started, every single day, just like we eat food every day, we need to take that into our minds that God loves us. Live that's your right. life loved by God, knowing that you're loved by God. Man, that's good. Live your life loved. Live your life loved. Yes. Mm. Yeah, how many, and that's, and that's interesting. We can, we can look at our lives, we can look at situations, we can look at our days and just go, you know what, how would I act or react differently having that thought that I am loved at the forefront of my mind. What mm -hmm. if what if I looked at life through those lenses? <sighs> how would how would my reactions change? How would puff that chest I, out I, and yeah, right. flex those arms? I'm <laughs> invincible. Right how would I how would my how would my speech change? How yeah. would my voice inflections change? Yeah. How would my how would my expectations change going into a situation instead of being defeated, knowing that I'm loved and mm. cared for. Mm. It, it really puts a, a different twist on, on living life and living life out loud for Christ. Um, yeah. Because you know, you know you're loved, you know you're, you're taken care of. Um, and, and two, right. when you're attacked, when the enemy attacks and sends things um, to come against us, if, if that first layer of defense is the love of God and who, what he has for you, that love that he has for you, that's a whole lot for the enemy to get through. It is. To get to you. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is hmm. because it is so powerful. It is. It really is. That, I like that. That's a, that's a great defense because it's hard for them to get through it. That That's really good. But if, you know, to build upon what you said, if we step forth every day knowing that it would change our thoughts and our actions and right. our words. Yes. We wouldn't be so self-defeating. Would. Yeah. Right. You know. Yeah. How, how, how much does it hurt your heart to hear your child yeah. talk negative about themselves? Yes. Oh, my goodness, yes. I, yeah. And my kids are a little older than yours now, but I remember those times. I remember specifically with my son one night how he was being bullied in school mm -hmm. okay and he was just self-defeating he was 11 years old and just beating himself up and i'm like no i love you yeah your mom loves you yeah and just like that turned everything around for him Ooh. brightened his day i mean he he it took yeah a couple weeks to really yeah. get through that but from that point on he stood up to that bully mm. We were standing behind him watching. He actually, the, the kid called him, or I don't know if it was on, I don't know if he called him or if it was on Facebook. It was something on Facebook, and he was like sending him messages. We're watching it, and we didn't have to jump in because he handled it well mm. because he stopped self defeating. Once he knew he was loved, he knew that, but to hear that and to live that and to carry that. Right. Really well, made a difference. Again, but, you know, for you to speak, there again, words. Yes. Power, life, death, but they are powerful. And for you to speak that into the situation and into his life and to watch him own it yeah. and accept it and live according to it. It's like that love becomes that foundation for for your son at that point in time right. to step forward. It gave him a firm foundation to plant his feet upon. Right, right. And, and that's what God is doing for us in our battles and in our fights because sure enough, there's an enemy out there that's looking to bully us. Right. You know, And we need to be able to stand firm on that foundation of the love that God has for us and know that it's true and know that it's solid and know that it cannot be defeated. 
It will right. never be removed from us, as right. Paul tells us. Never be removed, right. And it, we st- there are times when people will still, they, they know it, they know they're loved, but they'll still say those words, self-defeating words. Yeah. And all you have to do in that moment is, it, this is a very strong tactic of the enemy. Mm-hmm. You said it, it's real, this is happening now, and they just constantly barraging you. I mean, if I could show you what spiritual warfare looks like, it'd be something like this. <laughs> and if you're listening on the radio, I'm just sitting here like acting like I'm beating Ian in the head real fast. And I, of course, wouldn't do that. But it's that constant barrage. It is that they try to keep you focused on the negative. Yes. The moment you turn it around and you say, "I am loved," boom, it's gone. Mm. Destroys that negative, and the thoughts will go away. You can't. You defeat them with the words that are coming from the Holy Spirit. Right. That you are loved. Right. Fruit of the Spirit. Love the fruit the of the I mean, Spirit. It's, it's the first one. It's the first know? one, right. And, and two, Paul goes on, you know, he, he talks about it in um, First Corinthians, um, the love chapter. Mm-hmm. You know, the greatest of these is? Love. Love. Yeah. And, and it really is one of the things, too, we don't, it's something that we want. It's something that we want to hear. It's something that we want to, to um, have as a part of our life. But, but we don't really look at it as a weapon. Right. But it right. is. Right, and and that's a lot of what we've talked about in weapons of warfare series and, and things like that, um, Bill. That was about three years ago when we did it here yeah, at the church. Yeah, but um, that was that's the first one. Love, love casts out all fear. Love. Right. I mean, and we can just go down the list, but it is so powerful and it's so strong, and it's one of the things that the enemy works so hard to dismantle yep. or deconstruct within our minds and in our hearts, so that we don't think that. It's something that we can depend on, that we can stand on, or that is there for us. Right. And I've heard people say, I've said to them, God loves you. No, he doesn't love me. No, that's not true. Yeah, or you, he doesn't know what I've done. Like he Okay, there. I don't know what you've done, <laughs> but I've done it probably. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right, and there again, but those are lies. Right. Those are lies, and God does. He loves us. He loves us deeply and dearly. And when we, we, the first hurdle is believing that you're loved. Mm -hmm. The second hurdle is understanding the power of that love to tear down these strongholds. Yes, what it can do and what, and and that's what Paul is saying there, you know, but God is for you. Yeah. And here's how and here's why, you know, because he loves us. Right. It's amazing. But to understand that, and, and that, that can, um, for some, uh, that can be a process. Mm-hmm. Um, sure. There's, uh, at times, Absolutely. a lot of healing that needs to take place. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and God is the healer, and he is the great physician, and he's the one that can mend those wounds and, and stitch our hearts back together. Um, but that process of understanding how much God loves us is something that we can ask for. Mm-hmm. And I know we've talked a lot about asking, sure. you know, but it's one of those things that it just, it's an invitation. It's an open invitation for, for us to ask, seek, and knock. And even if it's like, you know, I need to know more that God loves me, then ask him. Yeah. Just ask him and yeah. keep asking him and, and yeah. let him reveal to you how much he does love you because it, it's it's more than you could ever imagine. And we have a, an idea of what it could be or what it might be. Sometimes we even know what we want it to be. Sure. But just to ask God and let him show us how much he loves us and, and allow mm. our hearts to just um, to be those sponges, to just soak that up, that truth, um, that knowledge of how much he loves us and help us understand the power that it has in and for our lives and the power that it has against the enemy. So I would just tell you, ask. Just ask. It seems so simple, but it is so life-changing, isn't mm-hmm. it? It is. It is just so it life-changing, is. and, and it, um, it puts us in a position to more receive yeah. um, and, and um, enjoy how much God loves us, and it uh, gives us confidence to continue to move forward in the callings that he's given each one of us. Okay, so what do you say to the people who say, but I don't know what love is. I've never experienced love. 
Ask. Ask. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. That's the right answer. <laughs> no, it, is. it is the right answer, though. It is, and I don't want to. I don't want to s- sound like this is just so simple. But it is. Exactly. But it is, and and I think that's one of the another one of the tactics of the enemy is to keep us distant yes. from so many good yes. and wonderful things because it has to be difficult, it has to be hard, you have to work for it. All of those hurdles that that the enemy desires to put in our lives so that we can't taste and see mm-hmm. that the Lord is good and that His love for us endures forever, and. For those of, of you who say, well, I've never, I don't know what love is, ask the Lord and he will graciously and gladly share with you what that is. And, you know, when we started out, I said, it doesn't matter your status, your male or female and all those things. Right. It's so simple that God made it so simple that it doesn't matter who you are, what you are or anything like that that you can understand this and you can grasp this. That's he right. made it that simple. Yes, he did. That He really did. That Jesus died on the cross for us because of his love for us. Yes. For yes. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. And that's you. Yeah. That's me. And, and me. Yeah. And and everybody. It is. It just really is. And it it's it's one of those things that God just wants to pour out right. on us, and and it's it's simple, it's free. You don't have to work for it. Right. You don't have to do or be. You just ask. Love does not require a certain citizenship. Yes. Love does not require a certain language. Love does not require a certain skin color. That's right. Does not require perfection. That's, it just yes, that's truth. Is given to us. It is freely. It is freely. There's no requirements. Period. There is not. And nothing will separate us not. from the As love of God. Let's, let's ask right now. Okay. Let's ask right now. All right, Father Lord God, I just want to ask you to just pour your love out upon us, Father. Those mm. of us who have an understanding of what your love is, Lord, I ask you to bring even a double portion of that to us. Hmm. Father, that situations and circumstances that happen to us throughout our lives, just our daily life, that, Father, even our our vision would change and we would see your handiwork, we would see your fingerprints, we would see the things that are happening by your hand for us because you love us, Father. And those of us who have struggled to understand what love is, God, I ask you to make it clear and plain and simple. And Father, I pray that hearts are open to receive all that you have to pour out upon us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, I want to throw something out there too. Yeah. Say these words Mm -hmm. right now. I am loved by God. Say it again. Mm -hmm. I I am am loved loved by by God. God. Because if you have anything going on in your life right now or the, the demonic, the, the enemy has a stronghold against you, you have just weakened them yes. by saying those words. Mm. Amen. You have just weakened them. Amen. His prayer and those words have weakened the enemy yes. right now. That's right. Because his prayer to God is pouring out his love. He has. Yes. Now say it. Mm. And you are weakening the enemy. I am loved by God. I am loved by God. That's powerful. Say it every day. Yes. Walk with that in the forefront of your mind. Write Write it it on your forehead. Is that what you're going to (laughs) say? No, what I was going to say was get get like a a dry erase marker. Write it on your bathroom mirror. Okay, yeah. See it in front of you. You know, and, and we do that. We do all kinds of stuff like that. We we put stuff in front of us to remind us so that we're visual people yeah. for the most part. Most of us are visual. And, and to see those things and to and to speak those things. Yes. Yes. I love we've we that, Phil. That, we have so said on this target. on this show so many times that God spoke the world into existence. Yes. And he has yes. given us that power and authority. Say to this mountain, if you have faith, say to this mountain to move and throw yourself into the sea and it will be done. Speak it. 
Say, I am loved by God. I am loved by God. <sighs> Amen. Man, that's good. Amen. <sighs> Love it. <laughs> Fantastic. Nothing can separate us from the love right. of Christ. It, you know, I just feel like there's so much more we could say, but at the same time, what more can we say? Because it is that simple. It is. It is that simple. Yeah. It is that simple. And it's just to, to meditate, to meditate on those things day and night, mm -hmm. the word of the Lord. I'm going to tell you right now, somebody's life is changing right now for watching this show. Amen. So I'm going to ask you, if you're willing to, let us know. Mm. Send us a message. Yes. Love to be praying with that you. It, whether it be a private message or publicly, that this has changed your life. Why were we asking you that? Because we want to celebrate with you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Testify. Testify. And someone else... If you write it on, say you're watching on Facebook, and you write a comment that this changed my life and I understand God's love more, someone else is going to see that and say, okay, well, then I guess it can help me too. And it's going to spread. Because yeah. that's what God's love does, <laughs> is it spreads. That's right. I saw right. an illustration one time, and I, I used it in a children's message actually one time. Take a piece of paper and you write on it, God's love. Okay. okay? And then you rip it in half and you hand it to two people. And you tell them, rip it in half and hand it to two more people. Okay? You can keep going all the way down to the tiniest piece of paper, and you still get the same amount of love from God mm -hmm. in that tiny piece of paper as you did in that big piece of paper. And that's how it spreads. That's awesome. You, you give it to someone, and they spread it to someone else. Love it. Just like that commercial from the 70s. And they told two friends, and so on, and so on. <laughs> and there's some kids saying, what's he talking about? <laughs> the 70s you know how long ago that was <laughs> you want to know how long ago the 70s was as far away as it, when it was 1970 as 1920 was <laughs> it's that far away <laughs> oh my <laughs> oh my gracious <laughs> so now that we feel old yes <laughs> very <laughs> Very old. <sighs> okay, so what more can we say about the love of God? I mean, we could talk for hours and hours, giving examples of the love of God. Yeah. <sighs> ask. Just ask. Yes. Ask yeah. Just don't be afraid to ask. And you know, I know we've talked about this a couple weeks ago, but let's say it again. Don't be afraid to ask. Don't say he's not going to hear me. He. I've asked before. I've heard that one before, oh, too. Yeah, me too. Okay. You know what? Sometimes people have to ask me more than one time because I don't hear them. Now, God hears, okay? But if you don't ask again, they're definitely, I'm definitely not going to hear. And if you don't ask again, then God's not going to hear, right? Yeah. Keep asking. Keep asking. God hears, and God has a reason for not giving you what you want in that moment because he his love is so great that he knows what you can handle at whatever time but keep asking right persistence mm -hmm. yes keep asking keep knocking keep seeking yes Just you continue. will and as we go through life we we learn bad habits we learn things that we have to unlearn and it takes time like you always yeah. say it's a process yeah embrace your process we have to unlearn things and part of this unlearning is we have to understand that god does hear us and he is answering us mm -hmm. but we have to unlearn these things so that we can hear him better we can see him better but his love is there and when you ask it will be given when you ask seek knock Ask, seek, and knock. It will be given to you. Yes, it will. And the door will be open yes. for you every time. You know, I don't know what time we started, so I don't know if we've I been going like for a half an hour or 40 minutes or <laughs> or what, but um, I think this is probably as yes, good, good a place to stop as I any. And, um, but just, yeah, if you would, please let us know if, if we've touched you in any way with this. Not because we want to know, but... It really is going to help others. Yeah. I really feel like the Lord saying to me right now to, to say that so that when someone does put a comment out there, someone else is going to see it. We yes. never know 
who sees these videos or hears these messages, whether on the podcast, on the radio, right. YouTube, Facebook. We don't know, but we do know that people do hear and see them. Yes. And they'll see the comments too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it encourages them. Right. And that's that's it. And, encourage and one another. Right. I, And I say that because earlier today, I went back and watched a video that we did together for At The Table. Yeah. Um, sometime in 2019. And there was a comment on there. I'm not going to say what it was because I don't want to uh, embarrass anybody. But it... It meant something to me. I was like, wow, that's really cool. So I know that if it does something for me, it's going to do something for other people. Amen. And that was two years ago that we did that that show together. And we've come a long way since then, I tell you. Thanks, <laughs> yeah. yeah. We were very over. stoic and, and you know proper and everything. And now we're joking <laughs> around. and <laughs> It's fun. We have a lot of fun together yes, doing do. this. Um, yes, we do. And you know what? Another thing, Ian, is I went back and I also, after I watched that one, I watched the one we did in February of this year. Yeah. The very last episode of At the Table mm. when we talked about doing uplift. Oh, we yeah. didn't have a name for it at the time. <laughs> but one of the things that we said was that we wanted to interview people. And I know we've talked yes. about that. Yes, I think that is exciting. And I think now is the time to maybe start bringing some people Absolutely. in. Absolutely. We had Chad McLeish here. Yep. One night. And I've been thinking about how we can do it, too. You don't necessarily have to be so close together. Right. We can put somebody in a different part of the studio here and, and put a different camera on them or whatever yeah. and a different microphone. Oh, that sounds great. So if you want to be a part of Uplift. Yes. Join us. Let us know. <laughs> you don't even have to be here physically. We could do it through oh, Skype could, or, or there's many different ways we could do it that we could record. You can stay in your own home. Be a part of Uplift. Yeah out there for the whole world exciting so let us know if you know someone who might be interested in doing this let us know yeah that's awesome yeah i think it's great we it, a testimony uh share some knowledge you have some understanding of oh yeah biblical concept just carry on the conversation with us yeah tell us however what's going on you know what the lord's doing in, in yeah. your life or in your part of the world um, and, and just being able to share and, and further connect um, and encourage the church. I think it's right, wonderful. Right. And if you know someone that might be part of this, if they have a, an online ministry like this, yeah. we can share with one another. Oh, exciting. I think it would be great. So I think so, too. Help us out. Prayer at fulcrumradio.org. Yeah. Let us hear from you. Or you can reach us on Facebook. Mm-hmm. You can leave a comment in YouTube or Facebook. Yeah. There's all kinds of ways to get a hold of us. Yeah. Contact us. Take a look at um, fulcrumradio.org. Yes. The or the fulcrumcenter.org. Yes. Yeah, the fulcrumcenter.org. You, you can see some of the things that the Lord's doing through that, that um, the ministry there and, um, and get a hold of us. But um, yeah, we'd love to hear from you. Yeah. The Fulcrum Center you. is more than just the radio station. Oh, my. Yes. Oh, there's so much to it. There's coaching. Yeah. Um, working with coaches, working with schools. Yeah. Um, all kinds of of different development um, points of understanding what your gifts are, your talents are, helping you be and do what God's designed you to be and do, whether um, you're teaching in um, out in uh, the secular world or you're in ministry. Um, right. Different things of, as far as Bible studies and all that we've been able to put together and that we're doing um, and working with missionaries and, and stuff all over the world. Yeah, um, missionaries it's, it's too. It's really exciting. Right. We have People um, on the Fulcrum team, man, they're North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, yeah, Colorado. Um, they're all over. Right, a lot of things going on. Right, yeah. There's there's a lot, a lot going on. Um, it's more than just a fancy name, and it's a pretty. I like the name, but it's more than just a fancy name. <laughs> okay. Right. Well, even too, you know, we talk about radio, but there's two there's two parts of the radio ministry right that we right, have so right. we have fulcrum radio right that, that we do right, plays right, 24 hours right. a day seven days a week download the live 365 app and look for the fulcrum full look for fulcrum radio and download that and uh, you can listen to us 24 hours a day seven days a week not us but music music right <laughs> and different things but then we also are on secular radio stations yes and uh, we do 60 second uplift every monday morning during drive time when people go into work um just give a, a 60 second uplift uh, just a point of encouragement um, on secular radio stations. Two country stations, uh, today's hits station and a classic rock station. Um, we're in 17 counties here in the Ohio Valley. And um, it's just 
areas of, of reach and impact. Yeah. And just to encourage people, let people know God loves them. Absolutely. And he does love us. Yes, he does. Deeply. Say it. I am loved by <laughs> that's God. Right. That's I right. am loved by God. Love you him. are loved by God. Yes, you And are. that's all we have for tonight. We will Amen. see you all again next week. Thanks for joining us. It's been great. Yes. God, God bless. bless. Thank you.